Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to go over some tips and tricks for Sunhaven beginners. Now I for one am also a Sunhaven beginner, so these are some tips that I've picked up while playing, and also a lot of these were things that I just found online. If you don't know, Sunhaven is a multiplayer fantasy farming sim with dragons, magic, a main quest line, RPG style skill progression, and even a final boss. Build your farm and relationships with the townsfolk, or forge ahead on a quest of magic, monsters, and dragons. If you'd like to know more about the game and what it's all about, check out my previous video, Is Sunhaven Worth Your Money? And real quick, before we get into these tips and tricks, this isn't a sponsored section, I promise. I just want to thank you guys for all the new subscribers I've gotten in the past few months. I'm so close to being able to apply for YouTube Partner. I just need to get my watch hours up a little bit. So it would be super helpful if you guys could go back and watch some of my videos. I would really, really, really appreciate it. I want to be able to post more content for you all, but as of right now, I can only get long form videos out like this around once a month. But if I'm able to monetize my YouTube videos, I'll be able to dedicate a lot more time to them. So if you like my content and want to see more, you can help me out by watching my past videos and live streams here on my YouTube channel. And I won't even be mad if you just play my video on mute in a background tab. But anyways, thank you so much for your support and let's get right into these tips and tricks. I think the most important tip is that Sunhaven is a game that can and should be played at your own pace. If you aren't sure what you should be doing, don't stress too much about it. There's absolutely no rush to complete this game. Seasons come and seasons go, and you'll always be able to do or find something that you missed out on before once the season rolls around again. Just explore and discover new things along the way, and enjoy your first playthrough of the game. Completing quests is a great way to keep yourself busy if you don't know what to do next. Speaking of taking things slow, try not to rush through the main story too fast. The story element of the game can be very alluring to players, and you may want to try to complete the main storyline quest right away. But not only does that make the game not as enjoyable, but you may also have to fight off dangerous monsters in some quests that you aren't powerful enough for. Completing these main quests unlocks new farms, and managing them all at once can get very overwhelming very quickly. The options menu has some surprising things that you can tweak. You can change the length of an in-game day, whether or not you want pests that you need scarecrows to ward off, whether or not there are seasonal effects on your crops you'll want farming totems to counter, whether or not you want seasonal bosses to spawn on your farm, whether time pauses during conversations, and whether or not you're straight up invincible. The developers really went an extra mile when it comes to letting you customize your experience and being able to have a super casual farming experience if you want. Set the daytime to 30 or 40 minutes to really get the most out of your gameplay. The standard 20 minutes can easily run out if you want to get the most out of time-consuming things like mining, fishing, and farming, especially with how slow the tools are in early game. And speaking of time, you can manipulate time changing to your advantage whenever you please. If you find yourself waiting around for, say, a date or a time-specific event, you can just make your way over to the area, set the time to 20 minutes, and the event will arrive quicker. I stumbled upon this super helpful museum guide on the Sunhaven subreddit posted by user Dreaming Bird. This guide can help you remember what you need for the bundles and what rooms all the bundles are in. Since there are a ton of bundles in the museum, it can definitely feel very overwhelming without a guide. Feel free to screenshot this guide or I'll even leave it linked in the description. Some menus pause the game, some menus do not. Basically, if it's a crafting menu, game time is still going. You can look behind your menu and see if animations are still going. If they are, then time is still rolling. If not, then it stopped. Your skill tree menus are time stopped, so you don't have to worry there. The general store is your anytime crops vendor and always has two crops at a discounted price at the front of the store. They refresh daily if bought out. Starting out, you'll want to take advantage of that as much as you can. Another thing that I found posted on the Sunhaven subreddit is this farm planner posted by user Luna Katie. If you like to put an effort to make your farm look aesthetically pleasing like I do, then here's a little farm planner on Google Sheets to help plan out where you want to place things. I'll leave this linked in the description as well. When moving into a new season, right click the hoe on your dead crops to retrieve seeds instead of dead crops. This will not only save you time clearing out everything, but you get free seeds that you can replant when they come back into season again. It's a much better deal for selling your dead crops for a sad, sad one gold each. Learning that receiving flower seeds by mail skill early on in the farming tree is really nice. 20 flowers is the exact amount you need to have two beehives fully operational. You don't have to water your crops or flowers that are fully grown, like the ones around the beehive. 
5 or the ones on your Nelvari farm, if you have that farm unlocked. Wheat and rice are key items needed all the way through your gameplay. Wheat is used for cooking, farming table stuff, animal food, and more. One of the easiest bundles to complete is the flower bundle, as those seeds are available year-round, and the reward includes the ability to make bouquets, which are universally loved gifts. You can start raising animals without having a barn, but you only get six animal slots. Seed makers use a touch of mana and one to two crops to produce seeds. They will take 48 hours to make the said seeds. It's always a positive return, so it's a good idea to have four or five going at all times, once you unlock the seed maker. Since the craft time is set, consider only using crops with long growth times to get the most value and return out of them. Fertilizer continues working for multi-harvest plants, so you can get really good mileage out of them. So you can plant a two season crop and only have to fertilize it once, like coffee beans that you can put into a keg. There are hidden freebies that refresh once per week. The birds near the general store have one wheat seed. Just southeast of them, there's a wheelbarrow near a building with one free potato seed. The Fountain of Elios provides plus four max mana. East of town, there's a fireplace just north of the guards near the bridge with a free fire crystal. And in the forest, there's a moon well blocked by a snackoon that gives plus five free max mana per week. Unlocking air skip in your skill tree is absolutely essential. It's great for jogging around town to get around a bit faster because in early game, you start out walking very, very slow. I think if you choose the gatherer profession, you start out walking a bit faster than any other characters do. That's what I have, and I haven't really had any issues with walking too slow like other players have. And speaking of walking slowly, another important upgrade besides air skip is to unlock faster walking speed in general. The map is quite large and time is limited, so as you upgrade your exploration skill by foraging and picking up items, make sure to focus on the skill trees for increasing your walking speed, as well as double jumping. You will always want more mana, especially past a certain point in the game where your mana use will skyrocket. Exploring the forest and doing combat there will often run across mana tomes. Mana tomes are items that can be found where monsters are present that can be used to increase your maximum mana amount permanently. But the biggest help you can do yourself here, like I mentioned before, is to visit the Elio statue once per week. Rice can be combined with the seaweed you find for free on the beach to make sesame rice balls. The sesame rice ball is a dish that can be cooked in a cooking pot. It restores a small amount of mana and also permanently raises the player's mana pool by a moderate amount. The best spells to learn in Sunhaven are as follows. Air Skip, which we covered earlier. Fireball. With this spell, you can deal 12 to 16 damage to enemies and burn them by shooting fireballs. It only uses one mana per fireball and there's no cooldown time. So you can just spam fireballs till your mana runs out. Vacumulus. This spell creates a shockwave around the player that can deal 15 to 25 damage to enemies, but it's better used for mining a big cluster of ores all in one hit. Chain Lightning. This is a tier 5 spell, so it'll take some time to unlock. However, it's worth it. When using this spell, you fire lightning at enemies that also hit other enemies nearby. You can deal 14 to 22 damage, and you can make it even more effective by learning the double strike skill. As the name suggests, your attacks will now hit enemies a second time with reduced damage. Ethereal Axe. This spell creates a huge aether axe in front of you that deals 40 to 50 damage to enemies and trees. Ethereal Axe can also be used to slowly chop away at those big hardwood stumps on your farm that you need stronger tools for. Same goes with Vacumulus for big rocks. Ethereal Axe is very handy for chopping down trees, but it's not recommended to use it for combat because of how expensive it is when it comes to mana. Using Chain Lightning for combat is much more effective. I would advise taking money in the first week or two over experience rewards, as the gold really helps in early game to get more seeds. But take bonus community tokens overall, as you can buy an engagement ring for 100 community tokens and then sell it for 6k gold. Fishing is a great way to get money early game, especially once you have fishing nets and you have a stable source of passive income. Get the juicer as soon as possible, and then the cooking tables. Much like Stardew Valley, the real key to profits is converting base products into something more expensive. And unlike Stardew Valley, selling things you cook is a major revenue source. Be sure to save up some cash for festival days. Festive orange seeds are a massive health boost from the Lantern Festival. 
And while it's not the biggest deal, it's annoying to miss. Like with most farming games, when you first start out, you won't really have very many crops to sell at first. Foraging is your best friend during those first few weeks. The seashells on the beach and any fruit you can find will gain you a lot of money initially. I don't have a whole lot of mining tips. Mining in this game is pretty straightforward. If you have any good mining tips, be sure to leave them down in the comments. But a good little life hack when it comes to mining is that you can mine up to 1150 and then exit and re-enter the game. This allows you to fast travel home to maximize your time in the mines and avoid passing out. Once you open the game, it will actually be 11 p.m., so you'll have time to place things in chests and sell things. This tactic also applies in different situations if you're late and want to make it home without passing out. Another thing I've noticed while mining and trying to unlock new levels is that rusty keys are usually by a beam of light in the mines, like 99% of the time. So if you're out of keys and need to find a rusty one, look for a beam of light. A good place to farm combat XP is the beach south of your farm, where these super easy to kill crabs constantly respawn. And the same thing goes with the secret woods area west of your farm, where a bunch of easy enemies are there to kill, over and over again. But be careful because if you travel far enough, there is a boss battle there. Like I mentioned earlier, there is an invincible option. Using invincibility will not prevent you from getting any of the Steam achievements. There's no shame in turning on invincibility if combat is not something you're into in gaming. If you want to engage in combat, but you're also kind of a scaredy cat like me, fighting certain enemies behind rocks is much easier. For fishing, one skill you don't need is the one that lets you cast your line out further. I have yet to find a spawn I couldn't reach without it. Maybe you'll need it in late game, but I wouldn't waste your skill points on it in early game. A small fishing net is a tool to passively collect fish on your Sunhaven farm. Fish from a small fishing net can be collected roughly once a day. The items caught differ slightly if the net is placed in a lake or a river or in the sea. You can go on dates and give gifts to romanceable characters and get them all to 10 hearts with absolutely no effect on your character's relationship or marriage. So you don't have to worry about cheating on your partner. Each romanceable NPC has a book in their house that will list everything that they like or love. Do not underestimate the power of dialogue. Sunhaven is an interactive simulator game and introductory dialogue and talking to other characters is a very important part of it. The responses that you give the NPCs actually matter. Skipping the dialogue is a rookie mistake because having a good dialogue with the NPCs awards players with keepsakes, ultimately increasing the gaming XP. Crafting is a vital part of making progress in Sunhaven. There are many different crafting stations that allow players to do many different things, from crafting tools to armor, weapons, and food. And if you choose a human character when you're creating your character, you can significantly increase your crafting speed. Really pay attention to all your recipes and crafting tables as you go. It can be easy to miss some vital craftables. For example, the alchemy table can turn stone into copper and then copper into iron and so forth. And that my friends are all of the tips and tricks that I have for today's video. Do you have any tips that I didn't mention today? Feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Like I said before, I myself am a Sunhaven beginner, so I would love to them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!